tools created by hominids were made of wood, bone, and teeth. One of the early tool makers was Australopithecus garhi. This happens to be Australopithecus garhi. This is the recently discovered uh, uh, thing by Tim White from Ethiopia, dates to about, I think, 2.6 million years, was associated with stone tools. The brain size on this is coming out to about 450 cc's. The first stone tools were simple chips of rock or hammer stones. The earliest tools, earliest stone tools, appear about 2.5 million years ago. And uh, they're tools like this, very, very simple affairs. This is on a stream cobble. And just a small number of flakes have been taken off uh, to give an edge here that might have been used uh, to scavenge animals that were already dead. This is not a weapon. Uh, it's uh, an object to access meat. Uh, as we move forward in the record, we begin to see beautiful stone tools like this. This comes from a period called the Ashelian, uh, which began about 1.8 million years ago. And we see these objects very carefully formed with large flakes taken off and then very s and smaller flakes around the edge to give it that final touch. What's very interesting about the Ashelian is that there's a great deal of regularity in the form over a long space in time. This is African, this is from Somalia, and this is from France. And there's probably a million years between these two stone tools. So there's great regularity, great standardization of these tools. They clearly knew what they wanted, and they clearly knew how to get it. So information was being transferred, not only between individuals, but between generations. And as we move on, we begin to see even more carefully formed tools like this. This is Mousterian, and it still has the same basic shape, but there has been extra care given around the edge uh, to give it a very fine form. Over the span of millions of years, we see the ever-increasing brain size of humans. The differences between Australopithecus africanus and afarensis are not very great, but we can see a slight increase in brain size. An important discovery was made in 1925 that helps us understand the evolution of the human brain, the Tong child. Another very famous specimen uh, is the Tong specimen, uh, originally dis described back in 1925 by Raymond Dart, uh, Dart's baby, it's been called. Uh, it's a young Australopithecus africanus. There was a very small brain, uh, size of a chimpanzee, but the jaw, in fact, was virtually modern. Uh, this little jaw of the Tong child, most of these are, these are all baby teeth, and this is an adult six-year molar here. So the child was about five or six years old when it died. And what Tong told us is that the jaw emerged very early in modern form, and the brain came along quite slowly. In other words, there are already changes taking place in the brain, in its organization, regardless of the size of it. So size and organization may be acting somewhat independently in the course of human brain evolution. A larger, more robust form of hominin emerged about 2.5 million years ago. The name given to this species is Australopithecus robustus, or robust southern ape. They have been found in South Africa. Some attribute it to the genus Paranthropus, which means beside man. The front teeth of Robustus, the incisors and canines, were the same as Africanus, but Robustus premolars and molars were much larger. Large muscles anchored on a tall central skull crest powered their massive jaws. Another robust species was discovered in East Africa and named after a British businessman 
Charles Boise.